The key numbers we are all watching closely staying steady tonight as we look forward to beginning the slow process of reopening our state. Hello, everyone. I'm Nicole Baker. And I'm Vic Carter, the number one, uh, the one number rather that keeps jumping into record breaking levels in our, our state is unemployment mm -hmm. as frustration over filing boils over for some. We have extensive live team coverage for you tonight. Let's start with WJZ investigator Mike Helgren. He is breaking down the numbers. Nicole and Vic, many of these new claims were for newly eligible filers, including the self-employed. There were more than 9,000 claims filed last week here in Baltimore City alone. But I want to really begin with the health impact and the push to protect some of the most vulnerable Marylanders. Because how many people are dying that we don't know about? Julie Majors is an advocate for inmates and knew the latest victim to die in Maryland's correctional system. An inmate at Roxbury in Hagerstown, the third person dead from COVID-19 while behind bars. I had kind of looked him up every day to, 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 to see where he was. And then when I looked him up and it said he was out of custody yesterday, my heart dropped because I knew. The corrections secretary told lawmakers Thursday, not every inmate is being tested. There are almost 250 positive cases. The majority are officers. They don't have the ability to protect themselves in a manner that's appropriate. Nursing homes are another hot spot. For the first time, the state fined a facility, Sage Point in La Plata, $10,000 a day for failing to properly care for residents. 34 of those residents and one member of the staff have died, the most in the state. The health department wrote a letter accusing the facility of failing to appropriately use protective gear, wash hands, and isolate positive residents. Sage Point disputes the findings. They were locking their PPE away from their staff and employees and telling them that they weren't symptomatic, so they didn't need any. On the economic side, a record more than 109,000 Marylanders filed for unemployment last week. Many remain frustrated. My nerves are about shot over this whole thing. We I spoke just, uh, to Judy Kilgore yeah, one week ago after she abruptly stopped receiving benefits. She still hasn't gotten any answers. I made. 3,000, probably close to 4,000 calls now with no response. You can't get through. While the governor insists the state's problematic new unemployment website is fixed, Kilgore says that website is not the problem now. I was a little disappointed he didn't address the phone system because that's the issue now that people can't get answers that they need to find out what's going on with their claims. And she tells me she never thought another week would go by and she'd still have nothing. She's growing increasingly worried about providing for her family. Reporting live at City Hall, Mike Helgren, WJZ.